Okay, good day everyone. So this is submitted to me by one of the groups uh, taking FS. Let's review because there's a lot of you who really don't understand or fully understand well how demand analysis work using the demand and supply analysis. So let's start with the market segmentation. So for the market segmentation, we start with the population. Okay. So in this case, this is very, very specific. I think the population that is indicated here is for a particular barangay. So it's very, very specific, 32,029. So most of you targeted the entire Davao City. So that's really very broad. And of course, with that, we tend to have a bloated base demand, of course, because you're targeting the entire Davao City. That's also the reason why we take some percentage that would also reflect a certain barangays that is possibly to be your close customer or the, the customers that has close proximity with your business that will be getting into your business also. So in this example, so start with the specific population. So it, uh, and then we input this one, user status, buying intention, and buying power. So these are in your survey questions. Okay? Try to review your survey questions. So these are the essential, the essential elements that should be added in the market segment until you narrow down and you reach the base demand. Okay? Now, so we are done with the market segmentation table. Okay? But by the way, I will not discuss further how do we get user status because you, you know it already. Assuming that you already know. Okay? So let's go directly with the table. So we're done with table 1. Now we go with the buying frequency table. Now, why is it the buying frequency table is very, very important? It is very, very relevant because for the reason that you try to measure the customer or client that comes back to your business or the potential client that comes back to a particular business. Okay? By the way, the base demand represents the entire demand for whatever product or service that is being sold in the market. This is the generic demand. This is not yet your demand. So, the second table is the buying frequency. Now, in buying frequency, there are four columns. The buying, the frequency, the percentage, segmentation, segmented demand. This is wrong. This is segmented demand. Segmented demand, frequency equivalent, and the demand. Okay. So, where do we get this, this one? The buying frequency items here. Okay. The, the buying frequency items are also reflected in your survey questionnaires. Okay. So, how frequent that, that question? Okay. So, basically the result here, this is the product of your effort. When you try to take the survey, okay, the result of your survey for the monthly or the respondent who check choices, no, because these are your choices monthly, quarterly, biannually, and annually. So 47, this is the dominant. Okay, for your for your quarterly, you have 19, then biannually 10 percent, annually 24 percent. So what does it mean? So it means that there are a lot of people that would go back to your business on a monthly basis. So the most dominant here is the monthly. People tend to come back on a monthly basis. So that is 47% and then the demand for it is 57, 380. But let's discuss first how we arrive with 4,782 then down below. So, to get the segmented demand, you're going to multiply it. You, you're going to multiply the base demand from your percentage. Again, where do you get this percentage? This is from your survey questionnaire, the result of these items here. 
Okay? So simply multiply 10,000 by 47. The answer would be 4,000 plus. Okay? 10,000 by 19, the answer would be 1,900 plus. 10,000 by 10%, 1,000 plus. Okay? 10,000 by 24, 2,000 plus. Then, frequency equivalent. Okay? So how do you get, how do you get frequency equivalent? Monthly, there are 12 months in a year, so you put 12, 12 months, okay? Quarterly, there are 4 quarters in a year, so you put 4. By annually, you split a year into 2, then it's 2, okay? Annually, it's 1, okay? That's the, that's the frequency equivalent or how frequent the customers are going back to your business. And this is very, very important. Why? Because that's the reason also there is what we call branches look at hb1 look at convenience stores look at mercury drugs i mean the, the mercury drugs is that that's that's not in the uh, in the malls okay or in in some places why do they have a branch for the simple reason that they also are targeting a specific market including knowing how frequent the clients or customers are coming back to the business. Therefore, they are able to calculate the projected demand. Okay? That is very, very important. Okay? So, now that we are done with Table 2, the buying frequency, we will proceed with Table 3, the supply analysis. Okay? Do not be confused by the by the term supply analysis because it just simply means the number of clients that your competitors have catered. Okay. So for this uh, business, they said they only have direct competitors A, B, C, and D, and this is their monthly supply or the number of clients. Okay that they cater every uh, every month which is for competitor A they have 1120 for V and 50 for C 870 and D 580 and so on and so forth okay then you total it so this is the total uh, monthly supply then how do we get uh, the annual this is wrong this is annual okay by the way I'll be, I'll be sending this excel file to uh, that group they're one of my advice okay so how do you get this 13400 just simply multiply by 12 okay Let's try to put some formula oh wait okay so let's try to put some formula so that it will be easy for us to to do some computations so remember class always put some formula so that it will be seamless for you to be doing the computation okay right, well same also here okay same also here so if you just only use the the, the correct template and you did you not you did not mess around and then this already formatted i don't know why some of you were not able to retain the formula okay <clears throat> double check to press f2 in here let's check it's correct again no decimal because this is these are humans okay so no decimal okay and this one also let's check Always put formulas or try to format everything so that it will be seamless for you. You just have to input and then it will be automatic. Okay. Okay, so now we are able to I you are we are able to identify the number of clients our competitors have uh, in a monthly basis and annual basis. Okay. So now let's proceed to table number four, the demand and supply analysis table it's okay 
So, how do we get the projected annual demand? This is projected annual demand. Projected annual supply. Okay. Projected annual supply. Okay, how do we get this one? Okay, just F2. It's here. Okay, from your frequency, your buying frequency table. Okay, so it is already F2. So the moment you input something here, it would all automatically be inputted here. Okay, same here. Okay, projected now supply. It is already. Uh, formatted so the moment you put something here it would automatically input here okay then we have our demand gap so the demand gap you need to to subtract the projected annual demand which is six, 69,588 with your projected annual supply 42,240 you arrive at your two uh, demand gap of 27,348 okay it doesn't end there no? doesn't end there for some you can take 100% if it is realistic and doable for some you take a percentage okay you take a percentage okay why let's be realistic here you are just starting your business and when you're starting your business it's impossible also that you would automatically outperform your competitors okay, I, I don't think that it's gonna happen immediately in due time it may so we're trying to peg the number of daily customers our competitors have okay how to do that okay so this one so there are 3520 monthly clients our competitors have so we are going to take the average Okay, divide it by 4 because there are 4 competitors A, B, C, and D. Then divide it by 30 days. Suppose that you're open on Sundays, but if you're closed on Sundays, you use 26 days. Okay, if you are really close, okay, but if you're open, you use 30 days. Okay, so we arrive at 20 or 30 because there are decimal. No, we, we do not run down, we just add. Okay, we just apply the slow beans formula that we do not run down. So, this is something 0.33, 29.33, but we need to, uh, we, we, don't, we don't run down. So, we add up, then it, it arrives at 30 average daily clients of competitors. Now, we can peg the same with the competitors or less than the competitors, our daily target. At least, that's the conservative projection, okay? Okay, for this example... For my suggestion, I would like to try to use 30 daily average clients of the competitors as my threshold. Okay, so I'm going to peg at 30. So now, to get our target customer, our desired customers, no, out of the demand gap. Okay, let's multiply 30 clients per day times 30 days. So we, 30 days is one month. Okay, times 12 months, so we arrive at 10,800. So, this would be your conservative target in a year. Okay, 10,800. So, that is coming from 27,348 demand gap. By the way, the demand gap, as I have explained during discussion, this is the available clients for your business. Okay, if it so happened that the demand gap is very, very close very very close to the daily average daily customers or the da average daily clients of the competitors then you can have it 100% but in this case it's not near it's, it's, I think it's double so we decided to just peg our daily clients and customers with our competitors and use it as reference okay so so this is the computation okay 30 clients per day times 30 days and 12 months equals your target customer 10,800 now where do we get this percentage actually this is just we are going to F f2 this is just telling us that 10,800 10,800 is 39 percent of 
27348. But how do we get this one? We just simply uh, we just simply divide 10,800 from 27,000. Okay? From 27,000 348 and we arrive at 39%. This is for your year 1. Now for your year 2, you just have to increase it by 10%. As you just can see. So for you to seamlessly do that, you just multiply it by uh, 1.10 uh, 1 or 1.1, that is 1.10, so that it would automatically add the 10% from the principal amount. Okay? So same here. Same with year 3. Press F2 so that it would show. Same here. You need to subtract. subtract. And then this one, you just have to increase 10% coming from here. Okay, so I hope that I have explained this concept to you, the demand analysis, using the demand and supply analysis approach. I think I'm going to do a video also for market survey analysis approach. Okay, so I hope you're learning something and feel free to book on Calendly or join the Google Meet if you wanted to learn more on a one-on-one -on -one basis with me. So, see you in class.